Welcome to the art exhibit and meet the artist event for Sandy Snyder. This is a presentation through the Virginia Beach Public Library. My name is Sandy Hopkins and I am a adult services librarian for the Virginia Beach Public Libraries. My co-host is Robert Kennedy. He is the volunteer art coordinator for the Central Library Art Gallery. Robert, please introduce the artist. Thanks very much, Sandy, and welcome to all. Sandy Lee Snyder started cultivating her love for art and photography while growing up in the small town of Lawn, Pennsylvania, near Hershey. In high school, Sandy Lee expressed her love of the arts by painting theatrical scenes and murals and designing promotional materials for local businesses. She attended York Academy of Arts to study graphic design and photography, winning first place in special effects photography in the senior student exhibition. Sandy Lee then pursued a commercial art career, working as a senior art director at a number of major Philadelphia-based advertising agencies. During this time, she continued to nurture her love of photography. Now retired, from a design position at Tidewater Community College in Norfolk, Virginia, Sandy is back behind the camera. Her love of fishing and boating is a perfect inspiration for rekindling her passion to capture those moments in time that photography provides. Her knowledge of graphic design and digital technology has provided the ideal opportunity to make that transition a reality. Sandy Lee lives with her husband, Tom, on a farm in Creeds, Virginia. Together, they spend many hours exploring and uh, photographing the natural beauty of the woods and waters in the Back Bay and Currituck Sound area near Virginia Beach, a place she calls Heaven on Earth. Sandy Lee Snyder's work is on view at the Artist Gallery and Stravitz Art Gallery, both in Virginia Beach. Welcome, Sandy Lee. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, I'm Sandy Snyder, and um, I consider myself a fine art photographer. And um, I'm happy to be here today to share some of my work with you folks. Um, since you've already seen, heard and read my bio, um, I'll just elaborate on that a little bit. Um, when I was... Um, deciding what I wanted to do for a living and picked the art school that I was going to go to. At that time, they offered two majors. So I majored in graphic design and photography. Um, photography was very intriguing, but of course it was a lot more difficult at that time than it is now. And while I really enjoyed it, it wasn't something that I felt that I could do for a living. I ended up doing graphic design for the majority of my career. Um, it was about the time that digital photography really started to become a presence in our technology that I took a look at it again and said, I think I'd like to pursue this further because I really enjoy working on a computer. So um being fortunate enough to be in the creative services at tidewater community college i had the opportunity to go back and take some refresher classes and kind of learn the technology all over again so since then um it's been my really wonderful pleasure to reintroduce myself to the world of photography and how much i enjoy it and enjoy it even more now since we have a lot more freedom with our digital platform. So that being said, I'll just start with some of the photos that I enjoy the most. Um, when I started back doing my photography more um, intensely, um, basically I was, I, I was starting to consider myself a wildlife photographer, because where I live, there's an awful lot of wonderful wildlife. I live near the Mackey Island Wildlife Refuge and Back Bay Wildlife Refuge, and 
as I was taking some of my refresher classes, a lot of my assignments kind of led me to those areas. So, you know, I, and I love being able to be out in the wild and just looking at all the beauty there is around me because I feel very fortunate where I live. So um, that's where I started. So you'll see as I go through some of these photos that they are, there's a lot of wildlife that is a very big part of my work. Um, I love the pelicans in this area. I think they're just beautiful. And I love trying to find interesting ways to capture them because I feel that they are just, um, animals themselves have such emotions. They have a lot more emotions than I think we had originally realized. And I love capturing those kinds of emotions and the love they have for each other and the unity they have. Um, also, I really uh, have been very pleased that I'm in an area where we have these beautiful lotuses. Um, this is a lotus from the Sandbridge Lotus Garden. And so I go over there every single year and I have to um, capture them because every year they're just more and more beautiful. Also, um, I love to see patterns. And this is kind of where I started realizing that maybe I'm not just a wildlife photographer. Uh, so I kind of changed the, my connotation and decided that maybe I'm more of a fine art photographer. Since my background has been in graphic design, uh, I started to get more and more interested in the, the different patterns that are available in wildlife and how you can really make them so prominent in what we do in photography. Um, for instance, this is the Lynn Haven, it's Lynn Haven River Oysters, and I just love the colors and the patterns and how they um, just look so um, intriguing to me. I just think that's an exciting way of, of you know, looking at uh, natural patterns and just beautiful colors. And then we're, of course, back to wildlife photography. This photo was taken at Stumpy, at Stumpy Lake. Um, a lot of local photographers really like to go there because there's a rookery there. And, you know, at certain times of the day, the lighting is just sensational. I think that's another really important thing that photographers strive for is finding that perfect time of the day when the light is just absolutely sensational and the reflections are beautiful. And that is something that I strive to do. Um, this photograph was taken at the Mackey Island Wildlife Refuge. Um, it was at a time when the tidal pools were extreme and the tide was way, way out. So you could walk in areas that you normally wouldn't be able to do. And that was that's always fun because there's always so many interesting things to see that you that normally would not be available because they would be covered by water. So this was a very interesting time when we were able to go out there and see these lovely hidden treasures. Also, I live pretty close to the wild horses, the wild Mustang horses at Corova and Corolla. And every once in a great while, I get a chance to take a boat ride over there with some other photographers I, I um, work with. And we track down some of these beautiful horses and take a lot of beautiful pictures of them. All right, um, this is a really interesting uh, photograph. Um, this is a American bittern bird and they are very elusive. This is one of the fun things about the doing wildlife photography and photography in the wild in general. There's always a really great surprise that comes uh, when you least expect it. And um, these birds uh, are very hard to spot. 
And so uh, when you do have an opportunity to come across one, they actually oppose for you, but they are thinking that they're well hidden. So um, it's a real treat. And I think that's one of the things that I really love about photography. It's just so, uh, there's always a surprise around the corner. You just never know. You, when you have a camera in your hand and you're walking in a desolate area, you know, you just never know what's what's going to come out and what's what you're going to be able to capture. And it's just very exciting to me. I just love that part of it. So we'll move on. Um, this is a photograph that I took over at um, the Back Bay Wildlife Refuge. Um, just beautiful clouds, a lovely day. Uh, I just, I'm always looking for interesting lighting situations um, and a, a good composition. Um, the other thing that I really enjoy doing, and as you can see in this first grouping of photographs, it was kind of a mixed bag. Um, I've noticed that I really like when I can take a photograph and turn it into more of a graphic element as well. Um, I think that with my background as being a graphic designer, that's something that just comes naturally. Sometimes I just want to find um, a way of taking a photo and turning it into a little more than just a photo. Maybe not necessarily a painting, but adding a little texture to it to enhance it so that it becomes more than just a photo. Uh, it To me, it's, the textural aspects of the shell are already there and to enhance that just a little bit to add that little extra is is to me it's a lot of fun and i like to be able to share that fun with other folks and hoping that they'll enjoy what they see so i wanted to tell you a little bit more about my trip to alaska in 2015 that was one of the most exciting trips I've ever taken. Um, I went with six other photographers and we spent six days in the uh, Lake Clark Wildlife Refuge, which is um, uh, close to Denali. And it was just an amazing time for me. We photographed a lot of bears, which was really fun and scary. <laughs> uh, puffins which I thought were the cutest things ever. I just love them. They're very comical and, and very social. They, they just love to be around each other. Um, this was some of the white horned sheep, wild horned sheep that we saw, um, otters. And then just the scenery itself, I thought was really unusual and interesting. Um, very, very fun time I had in Alaska. So I'm going back to some of the photographs that I enjoy that are local. I, of course, living in this area and being near the ocean is a blessing. And I just really enjoy getting out there when it's, when, when it's really windy and the surf is wild. I just love to photograph that. I love to feel that wind in my face and it's just an amazing opportunity. Um, I feel very fortunate to have a camera to be able to capture some of those moments. Um, other places, this was in um, Edinburgh, I believe, um, where they have a lot of shrimp boats. And I love the patterns of all the different um, apparatuses on the shrimp boats. I just, I really like patterns. I try very hard when I'm doing my photographs to keep that element of graphic design in mind when I'm doing things. I think that's just something that is ingrained in me from my time when I went to art school. Again, you can see more patterns um, that I really like very much. and the contrast between the light and the dark in this sky 
is just really stunning to me. Um, it was, I, I still can't believe that early morning, this early morning shot was down in uh, Buxton on Hatteras Island. And we went out very early in the morning. The sun was just beating on those um, fences. And then all of a sudden this crazy wild storm was coming up in the background. And the sky was so black and I couldn't believe the contrast between the light and the dark. Um, it's just stunning to me uh, how, how nature does that. And you just, if you can capture it, um, it is, a, it, again, it's a surprise. It's a beautiful surprise. And, you know, um, photography is the one thing that allows you to capture that moment that you may never see again in the entire world ever, but it's there and we have it and it's for the sharing. I do love to take pictures of flowers, um, especially very common flowers. I love these uh, clovers. Um, I think this is just getting down there to their level is beautiful. Usually you think they're really small and insignificant, but they're actually very beautiful. Again, also, I, I like wildflowers. This is Queen Anne's Lace. This is also taken at the Mackie Island Wildlife Refuge. Just, um, um, they're, they're, they're beautiful. They're patterned, they're, they're delicate, they're exquisite flowers to me. And zinnias, who doesn't like a zinnia? <laughs> this was taken at the, at the Bay Breeze produce stand on the way to Sandbridge. Um, that gentleman, um, he plants a huge field full of zinnias and they are just the most gorgeous things. They're, they're, they make your eyes pop. They're so gorgeous. Then uh, again, I like to play around with some patterns. So I did this with, um, added some painterly textures to this really beautiful sunflower and bud. I'm just playing around with some different ideas. It's, it's part of the thing that I do that keeps me um, excited about photography because their digital photography allows you to do so many different things. And it's, it's, it's just so much fun. I find photography just the best fun ever. More patterns, shells, I love shells. Love being in the ocean, near the ocean and being having my feet in the ocean also. It's really exciting. Patterns of little tiny um, mushrooms. <laughs> I think they're beautiful. I, I, I like those patterns because again, that's that all draws me back to my roots as a graphic designer. I just think these patterns are beautiful and the lights and darks that are shown in in these types of photographs really speak to me as far as their graphic capabilities or graphic elements. Um, this was another uh, kind of a, what would I say? It was a, it was an exercise. <laughs> it was a, a technique I wanted to try. It's um, this is an abandoned house that is pretty close to where I live, um, but I added a lot of texture to it because it it was just it didn't have a lot of excitement, and I wanted to see if I could bring out the quality of the abandonment of it, but in a softer way than just um, showing it in its natural form. It didn't. It it looked. It didn't look as lovely. When you add some patterns to it, sometimes it adds a character to the photo that you wouldn't be able to see if you didn't add it. It's sort of like doing a painting and an, an impression of what I think that the house is trying to say. This is the largest live oak tree 
in the Back Bay Wildlife Refuge. I was on the, the tram one day when they were we were taking a tour through the refuge and the tour guide indicated that um, they stopped at this tree. And I was amazed. A lot of people have asked me if this is the tree that's down in Charleston. And I said, nope, this is our own tree. We have a giant uh, wild, you know, live oak tree right in our backyard. So, and I wanted to also soften it a little bit so that the core of the tree was where you would focus your attention. Um, this is the last photo in this particular show. I always do this one last because this is the photo that actually um, got me back into doing photography. I, I took this photo way back in 2006, I believe. Um, it was when I had gotten one of my first digital cameras and I took it down to the Maggie Island Wildlife Refuge where they have a very big patch of these beautiful pink lotuses. And I took many pictures of them and took them back and tried to process them. And um, I printed this one out the very first time and I said, oh my gosh, this is the most amazing thing. I think it's gorgeous. And it's always kind of been my signature piece. I have this particular photograph uh, framed very big and in my house. So it always takes me back to where I started and I like to end with sharing it because I think it's such a beautiful um, represented picture of this beautiful flower. That's it, folks. <laughs> now, thanks very much, Sandy. That was really <laughs> wonderful. Your <laughs> photographs are beautiful. Thank you. And uh, as you mentioned, you really do capture the surprise and wonder of nature. Um, and your discussion was not only informative but really captivating. Oh. I'm wondering if you could go into a little more detail about the. Uh, technical process? Do you have a particular camera and lens that you prefer? Uh, and also about adding texture as well. Well, um, first of all, I am a Canon shooter. I always have been. When I had, when I had decided that I was going to make this uh, a serious decision to buy a professional camera, um, I was very fortunate and I spoke to a lot of photographers who I've actually hired to do work for me um, when I was um, in a different role. As, as a creative director for an advertising agency, I used to hire a lot of photographers. So, and a lot of them um, I'm still very um, friendly with. And so I took a survey, I called, them, I called them and I said, okay, I'm going to start taking my own photographs. And I basically asked a lot of them which, um, which camera they use. And the consensus that I received from my particular group was they all preferred Canons. That does not mean that, uh, you know, Nikons or Sony's or anything are not good, but that was my preference because of the folks that I have dealt with in the past. So I've progressively in, uh, gotten better and better cameras. Right now I use um, a Canon 5D Mark IV, which I absolutely love. Lenses, I have lots of lenses, um, depending on what I want to shoot. I have macro lenses and then I have my biggest lens is a 100 to 400 millimeter lens that is really very good for wildlife photography. So, um, so it's a pretty, it's a pretty wide, wide range of lenses. You never have enough lenses. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, right. And, uh, you know, every photographer will probably tell you that. <laughs> sure, <laughs> so, sure. Um, as far as my my technique, um, one of the things that I learned early on is that 
really taking a picture is only half half of the work. The rest right. of it is editing. And you know, um even even Ansel Adams, you know, did a lot of editing in the dark room. We're fortunate now that we can edit on a computer, which is much easier and you don't have to deal with a lot of chemicals, but editing is incredibly important. Editing and cropping and um you know, spending the time to learn how to do that properly. Um, it, it's, it's a process. It takes a long time to learn that. Um, and I'm still learning. It's not something you ever stop learning. And that's the, that's the joy of it because you learn techniques from your, from other photographers, from reading articles. Um, it, it's not something that you just sit down and learn in one night. Um, I'm very fortunate that I have been working in Photoshop for an incredibly long time. So Photoshop is my editing uh, software. There are a lot of others and learning how to add textures is, is more like a, an experiment because you never know quite what you're going to do until you might add a layer that has a texture in it. You want to, you want to play with it. So it, it's, it's, it's always, um, you know, a surprise sort of like the photographs there, you know, you look at your photographs after you've taken like 800 of them when you're out, you know, doing a photo shoot and you say, oh my gosh, I didn't know I got that. And then it's like that in the dark in, in the uh, computer as well. It's, it's always, that's why I love it because it's always so interesting. Yeah, that's a really important point about editing. And it's so important to so many of the arts, actually. And you can really tell that your uh, design uh, background comes into play there. I, and also uh, about the selection process, you mentioned 800 uh, photographs. Do you tend to take uh, a lot? Does it vary? Do you take from different angles? Yes, I do. Um, I definitely do that. Um, you know, if I see a subject that I really like, I may, I might take it from every angle possible. And, you know, I'm looking for the best light source um, and, you know, the most interesting angle. Again, you're, I really do feel that a lot of my, my um, focal point comes from my graphic design background. And you know, it's it's hard to I a lot of people will ask me, well, um, you know, what what speed did you shoot? What what was your what was your settings? And I have to admit, I I I look back and I do them, but I'm not a person that is as technical as some photographers would probably like me to be. And that that comes from my um, my instincts of not paying as much attention to the technology as I do to the design aspects of it. I, I am a designer and I'm a designer in, in many areas and, and photography has given me a different way to design. And so if I'm too technical, I, I seem to lose my ability to use my freedom, and that's what I want. I will. I'll take. I'll take a hundred photographs, and then I will look through them and find the one that appeals to me the most. And I will. I will concentrate on two or three of them until I pare it down to the few that I I feel are acceptable. Okay, that's a, yeah, that's another very good point, and you certainly do have wonderful instincts there. Uh, I'm wondering if um, you do print on different surfaces. Is that up to uh, the people who are wanting to purchase your photographs, or yes, um, I have um, I have three printers of my own. I have a an Epson thirty eight eighty. 
that I print most of my own work on when I can, I can print um, up to 17 by 22 sheets of paper in my studio here. And I have two favorite uh, types of paper. Uh, one is a, a textured velvet paper that I really enjoy printing on. And the other one is a really high end, like a smoother finish. So it depends on, on what I'm looking for. The textured paper gives me uh, a depth that is, um, is interesting because the texture adds just a tiny bit of extra ink. And it's, I, I would say it adds a brightness to it. The uh, the high end smooth paper I can't remember the name of it I have it here um, it is a uh, it's excuse me ultra smooth okay that's fine <laughs> ultra smooth fine art it's all by Epson and the the smooth uh, you know if I'm looking for a sleeker look that's the one I'll use I I never use gloss. I, I personally, that's my personal choice. I, and why is that? Huh? Uh, why is that? You don't like the uh, look of the gloss or? I, I know the gloss is, is sometimes you can get a little more detail, but I like people to be able to see that image without any kind of uh, reflection. Okay. And to me, that's important. So, uh, I don't have the best eyesight in the world, and I don't like to have to, you know, move my head around to see an image myself. So for me, I I like to look at pieces that are not high gloss. So that's how I do my own work. I'm sure. But you have a great eye, though. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> I was wondering if you help. had any. <laughs> I was wondering if you had any advice for aspiring photographers. My advice mostly would be to have fun. Experiment, always experiment, you know, try new things. One of the things that early on, I, I have gotten some critical uh, remarks about not creating a particular style for myself. And I used to worry about that. And then I stopped worrying about that because for me, photography is constantly a changing and uh, experimental process. So I, I enjoy that, that um, you know, chance to do something new and to continue to uh, change what I'm doing and and improve or look for a new technique um, because that's what makes it exciting. Um, so that's and that was the reason why I decided that I'm a fine art photographer rather than just a wildlife photographer or a black and white photographer because I like too many things and I I like that opportunity to experiment because it's it makes it so exciting and. That's what keeps it fresh too. So I will always continue to do that. And I encourage any young photographers to do the same. I think it's very important to understand the basic techniques of your camera. Um, and if you don't know how to do something in your camera, look it up in the book, learn how to do it. I still keep my book with me every time I go somewhere. And if I find that I'm not knowing how to do something in my camera, I look it up immediately in my book and I figure it out. Um, and then that, that helps me to remember it. <laughs> and also, you know, it makes it then more natural because again, I don't want to concentrate on my settings and my, my technical aspects. I want to concentrate on my art but I have to know how to do that. So that's kind of how I handle things like that. I do something immediately and I look it up and check it. And yeah, good advice. Proceed. We, yes, we're, we're always, or should be always learning. 
And really the joy of what you do really comes through uh, in your discussion and also in your photographs. Um, I was wondering if you had any future plans or goals, um, any shows coming up or uh, anything like that? Well, I obviously this show is coming. Um, I am a a longtime member of uh, the artist gallery in Virginia Beach. I've been a member there since 2008, and of course now we are uh, segued into the Virginia Beach Art Center. And I I have been involved in them for a very long time, and will continue to do so as they as they grow as a group and as a um, significant organization in the Virginia Beach community. Um, they are, uh, they have been my, my family, my support system uh, for many years and have helped me tremendously to grow as an artist and photographer. And I can't thank that group enough for what they have um, done for me and and supporting me and what I'm doing and anything I can do to support them, I will do so. Um, I also they have some really work. are an excellent group. They are. They're fabulous, and I just um, I feel so fortunate to be there. Um, one of the things I tell people a lot is that um, all the years that I was working as a graphic designer, um, I was doing work for other people and following their lead as to what they wanted to do. And it was it was a wonderful career and I really appreciated all of that and all that training, but I never thought in, in my wildest dreams that I would ever sell a piece of fine art in a gallery it is the joy of my life to have segued into that. And it's, it's, um, I, I, my, I'm at a loss of words when it comes to, you know, the joy I find in somebody purchasing a piece of my art to give for a gift or something like that. It's just amazing. <laughs> so. That is excellent. And we Thank you. invite everyone to uh, visit the artist gallery to Leslie Sandy's photographs and the other wonderful artwork there. Thank you very much for joining us today, Sandy. It was really a pleasure and a beautiful show. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. I really appreciate the opportunity. You're very welcome. And thank you all for viewing this and be sure to view uh, all our art shows. Thanks again. We'll see you next month. Okay. Bye-bye.